So how would you make something like this using only a lathe? So first you would start off, you have um, your block of rough stone, and I believe this would be placed onto a vertical lathe, and the first operation you would do would be to use a cutting tool to come in here and cut the inside of the object out. Uh, once you've cut the inside of it out how you like, you would come across and cut this part here flat. Next, you would um, take the object and rotate it upside down and remount it. And because you already machined out this hole here, this gives you, uh, allows you to be concentric with this for making the rest of the operations. So you would mount it by like maybe stuffing it full of uh, clay and then having a clamp go inside or having some sort of uh, clamp like they use on lathes for um, going inside of holes. Next, you would um, cut this outside shape here, going around there, up like this, and then you'd face this off here. So this shape here you could um, have already drawn out and you could have a, uh, a tool, or sorry, a um, a guide that your tool would be following so that it would uh, be able to make this shape so you're not doing it by hand. Um, after you do that you would just have um, this piece here wrapping around and so the question is how do you remove this material out of here. Well, you don't have to always uh, spin a lathe, a complete revolution for operations you do. You can see here, this is a person operating a lathe and they're moving it back and forth to do a small operation only on one part of the object that they're manipulating. So, um, you can move a lathe like this either by manually turning it yourself. Um, you can do it like how they do in a washing machine or in your windshield wipers where they, uh, where the motor itself changes directions. Um, you can see here in this video from Keith Rucker where he's restoring this machine. It runs on one, it would, something like this would run off of a, uh, like a water wheel, and it uses one uh, direction of rotation, and you'll see that it was able to uh, switch the directions using some clutches and gear system, and you can check out more uh, details on those videos on how exactly that does that, but purely mechanically, you can take a single uh, direction of energy, like from a motor or a, uh, a water wheel, and cause it to oscillate back and forth however you want. And so by oscillating the lathe back and forth, you would have it follow another template that would be shaped like this. And this would allow you to make the cut inside of here to clear this part out. Um, so some other interesting things about this artifact, um, I think the most interesting feature is the, the holes that are drilled, and it'd be interesting to see the measurements on how closely related um, these holes would be. So after you, you make these cuts, you would then 
uh, likely leave it leave it on the lathe and uh, do a polish uh, pass on it um, uh, drilling the holes before you do uh, but the drilling the holes part is a bit interesting because it this would be the only operation where you actually have to remove it um, from the lathe or you have to reposition another tool around it so this would introduce more error so um, you can imagine this is sort of a, a bottom or top view and these are the, the handles here and you have your drill bit um, let me put that on another layer you have your drill bit coming down then the issue is having this the, the rotation of this compared to the drill bit when you're cutting this hole and then when you're coming over here you would have to either move um, and remount the the piece or you have to move and remount the drill bit which would introduce error so this would be where I would expect to find the most error in uh, the measuring of the precision of this item um, what's also interesting to note is that the the handles are are curved like you would expect if you were cutting on a lathe and since they would be cut on a lathe, you would also expect that that this surface and this surface would be very much in line with each other. Um, but you will notice that this uh, face where the hole is, um, it's not completely clean or uh, squared off. Which maybe this would be part of the, a polishing step. Uh, finishing where you sort of grind it a bit to um, correct for this oscillating back and forth. Um, and a, another interesting thing here is that the um, the top of the top of the the object is actually wider than the the base of it is which to me suggests that it would be this would be the orientation that most of the machining work would be done on it um, some other interesting things when you look at the other other objects that don't have handles um, the base isn't flat or there's no like really mount point to them and so this would also suggest that you would be lathing them in this orientation here with the lathe being down here at the bottom so to me the um, part that needs further exploration is what the actual cutting tool would be to perform these operations on the stone so different possibilities would be like an ultrasonic cutter, um, some type of uh, jewel or um, metal alloy um, or um, maybe another tool that itself rotates like a grinding wheel. Uh, these are things I plan on making more videos of in the future, different uh, cutting tools, different um, uh, uh, techniques to power all of this machinery, like uh, the water wheel, like I mentioned, um, among other things in terms of uh, construction of these ancient items like the pyramids and um, uh, the stuff you see in Peru.